back to the show. I'm with Franco Prio at Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning. How are you, Franco? Oh, I'm well, thank you. And yourself? I'm very good. Jeez, we're, we're getting a bit of wild weather at the moment. Yeah, hence the jacket again. Oh my God, it's gone horrid out there. Yeah, yeah we like... don't put heating on in the studio. We can't afford it. <laughs> oh, is that one of those? <laughs> But Franco, you said it's a great time of year to talk about carpet maintenance Absolutely. and yep. give people some really good tips yep. on getting their carpets fresh and bright and clean. And uh, well, it's not even so much about just being fresh and bright and clean; it's about keeping it that way. Mm, okay, because okay. yeah, I make money out of you know people getting dirty carpets, but yeah. really, your carpets are an expensive thing or an item to buy and put it to your house. And it's know. not exactly cheap, no. and so it's not something you want to do too often. So you want to maintain it properly in between cleans. The cleans, you know, gets the uh, all the all the, the, the real mucky stuff out and, and makes it look nice and clean and bright. But how do you keep it that way? Yep. So that you don't have to call me in so often. Yep. And you extend the carpet life. Well, so we are going to do a show on tips. <laughs> yes, we are. So tip number one. What can, what's a, what's a good what's a good idea? Okay. Tip number one: vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. Okay, uh, that's the biggest one. There's a lot of people, carpets are designed to hide dirt, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, the problem with that is people look at the carpets and think, they don't look dirty, that's fine. But they look at the hard floors, oh, they're covered in muck. So they, out comes all the cleaning gear and, you know, the, the car floor gets cleaned regularly. Mm -hmm. But the same amount of dirt's hitting your carpet. So where do you think it's going? Nowhere. It's still sitting in the carpet, okay? You get that um, lot of sand, uh, which like sandpaper, it's abrasive, it yep. will start to damage the fibre. You get a lot of dust in there, you get a lot of skin scale, which is what your dust mites like. Yep. Okay, not that you get a lot of dust mites in your car, but there always is going to be that impact. Um, and there's just all those sorts of bits and pieces, which is dry particulate matter or dry soil. Mm. Okay, now 80% of the, of the dirt in your carpet is dry soil, and guess what? You can vacuum that out. It's not something I need to get out for you. So if you've got a decent vacuum cleaner, an upright vacuum cleaner, and generally oh. speaking, yeah, um, then your carpets will be much better off. And it's not a case of doing it. Oh, it's starting to look dirty. At least once a week. Okay, yep. most of us clean our half floors once a week, so the carpet should be at least once a week, if not every two to three days, to stop it diving down into the carpet and getting trapped at the base of the carpet. Do it every few days, and you'll keep it up and out and fresh. No, I know one of the things you said in upright vacuum cleaner, and you've explained on the show before, they've got yes. the wheel at the front. It's kind of a beater and loosens stuff up for That's us. exactly, it's a beater, a beater bar. Yeah. So it vibrates the dust and soil up mm. out of the carpet, which then gets trapped into the airstream from the machine, and then goes through the machine, gets trapped in there. And by the way, do not get a machine without a HEPA filter, especially if you have allergies. HEPA filters, the high efficiency particle arrester. Okay, ah, so that's what it traps, stands for. That's what it stands for. <laughs> it traps those allergens. Yes. Okay, so that you, they, you don't just broadcast them out into the air and then they settle everywhere else in the house, yeah. which is what your normal standard non HEPA filter vacuum cleaner will do. They just can't effectively vacuum those smaller particulate matters out of the, uh, uh, out of the, uh, the airstream and it'll just eject mm. it straight out of the machine and into your face. There we go. Carpets do trap dirt. Now, yes. that leaves me to something we talked about before as well. Probably a little bit off topic of a, of a business tip, but maybe, or a carpet clean tip, but maybe for people who do have allergies, especially asthma sufferers, live in houses with just hard floors yep. because they think, oh, I can just clean that. But we've had the discussion that carpets are really beneficial for these people. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, the, 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 the latest research that had been done um, actually showed that the, for people with allergies, it's actually a benefit. A, a well-maintained carpet, if you yeah. just leave it, then of course it's gonna, not, not going to work for you. But if you have a well-maintained carpet, because of the fact that the carpet does act as that filter and it traps that, uh, that dirt and dust mm. that can otherwise be floating out in the air, it filters it out and keeps your air cleaner within the home. Whereas on a hard floor, every time you walk over it, that dust just gets flicked back up in the air. Just the air traveling yeah. through um, um, will flick that dust up and then it becomes airborne. And then anybody with, uh, with allergies will actually suffer from it. So if you've got allergies or asthma and things like that, especially the kitties, put, yeah. and then yeah. maintain it. Yeah, look, I actually had some customers uh, quite a few years ago that, um, I mean, this is back then when, when the, the, the research first came out about carpets and asthma go hand in hand and all the rest of it. 
Um, they had kids that were on steroids, chronic asthmatic, they mm. were really sick. Uh, doctor said, pull your carpets out, so they did that. They pulled all the carpets out and put this beautiful slate flooring as it, as it, you know, as it was back then. Yes. Um, only to find the kids got sicker. And now they've just spent tens oh. of thousands of dollars on replacing all the flooring. They couldn't afford to recarp the place again, so they had to throw down rugs everywhere. And they said that was keeping it relatively under control. Yeah. But with the heart floors, the kids actually ended up in hospital. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. And I'm going to take a bit of a, a pun here. On your website, Fresh yes. Air Kelly, you've actually got some of these tips on there, haven't you, for people? Uh, there's a fair bit of information, the mm. bits and pieces like that, um, that you, you, you probably want to know. Uh, so, yeah, if you, if you go on the website, you'll get all sorts of... Uh, yeah. Website levels. address? Website address? Well, you want to look at www.facc.com.au. Fantastic. You'll find us there. But we're on, we're so sure, on carpet cleaning and maintenance tips here. Yep. Tip number two, since I took it off on a tangent. See, on a slight tangent, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the other thing we can do, and this really helps a lot, put mats in doorways, okay? Especially oh. if you're coming in from outside. If you have a one meter mat, it will pick up 60% of the soil before it hits the inside of your home. Now, with mats, I've got to ask this, Frank, is the mat, is it good enough when we have carpet laid to get the carpet man with the offcuts to Absolutely. give it a bit of an edge? That's, yes. That's still a good mat? That's fine. I mean, there's, there's matting, specific matting that you go buy um, in, in, in shops as well that yeah. you know, are, are really are made for entry doorways uh, that will trap a lot of dirt in them. Mm. Um, but yeah, any sort of carpeting like that, as long as you've got something there that you step onto, one, two, even might be feet if you like, and then yeah. go to the rest of the house, it does make a significant impact on the amount of soil that travels into the house. As I said, one metre equals 60% reduction in soil levels. We have found a big difference because we've just built and we've got the garage. Yes. And we went and got some old carpet, you yep. know, when people ripped it out and we rolled all down, we give it a really good vacuum. And we have noticed just that, getting out of the car, walking from the garage into the house, and we do have a mat as well, but the amount of difference it's made to how much dirt actually yes. no longer gets inside, it's incredible. Yep, that's right. Now the other place that you really want to have floor mats yeah. as well is when you're coming out of your kitchen. Because guess what happens when you're cooking? Ah. All the oils get thrown up in the air and all the steam and all the bits and pieces and that settles. And where's it going to settle? And any horizontal surfaces, so all your bench tops or yeah. your cupboards or your bits and your floor. So your tile floor is now starting to develop this layer of oil on it, mm. which then you walk off and start traipsing through your carpet areas. So if you have uh, a mat on the tile yes. before you get onto the carpet, once again you'll get a huge reduction in the amount of soil and oils in particular that get stuck to your fibres and your carpets and then that just makes the carpet look grungy and, and foul. And, you know, yeah, it, 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 it speeds up the process of soiling quite rapidly. So that is another one that will help massively. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of people, and I know in Australia, and that's where we're in Perth, West Australia, we have a lot of kitchens going into our dining areas, we have our formal dines, and yeah. you do, you step off the hard floors, because we love our carpets in our nice, luxurious carpets in our <laughs> dining areas. So, and that's your same, put a mat there as well, and that'll really, really help. Yeah, but it's got to sit on the tiles, not on the carpet. Oh. Yes. Okay. okay. The reason for that is that um, if you ever do have a mat on the carpet, number one, they tend to squirm around a little bit. Yep. But if you do have them fairly well fixed, what happens is underneath stays nice and bright and clean, and then around it, you'll start getting <laughs> a border because <laughs> it's getting exposed to sunlight, it's getting exposed to trafficking, it's getting exposed to everything else. Oh. So it's wearing at a different rate to the rest of the carpet. Does that mean your mats, when you're coming in and out, should be on the outside off the carpet off the never carpet. on the carpet don't ever put a mat on the carpet i'm a great believer in not having mats on carpets at all i just don't like the idea of them okay um, and it's not because it, it makes my carpet soil up faster so that i can come around and clean your carpets again i yeah. actually um i find it objectionable to have them on there because they create just as many if not more issues than they resolve mm. so i'd rather see it on the tiled area because on the tile it doesn't matter it yeah. won't make any difference to the tile but the, to the carpet it certainly will it certainly will yeah Wow, two fantastic tips. Wow. <laughs> and run I, threw, I threw in one of them. <laughs> carpeting, the, uh, carpeting the garage. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> it's 
see I'm learning. Yeah, personal experience <laughs> anecdotes always go well. It does. It does work though, doesn't it? It, it, it does. It's it absolutely incredible. Does. And you know, if you haven't got it in there and you put it in there, you will notice quite yeah. a significant improvement. And, and I just went down the carpet shop. Yeah. And they said, oh, we got some really good carpet. We just pulled it out because they were having a change of carpets and hadn't heard about your recolouring, obviously. Yep. And uh, I just got this beautiful carpet and rolled it down. Yeah, well, I've free. actually got one that uh, it came from a local hardware store and it's got a, 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 a rubber backing on it. Okay. So it doesn't move on the tiles at all. It's actually fantastic in that regard. But the fibres themselves are designed to trap dirt. Oh. So they will actually pull more dirt off your feet than a normal carpet will. A normal carpet will still work, but this one yeah. just works particularly well. Particularly so well. Of course, less dirt for my house. I'll thank you very much. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Let's crank it up. Tip number three. Tip number three. Okay, when you have a spill on the carpet, and especially I've had, I've had quite a few people have done to me in the past. I said, oh well, you were coming around anyway, so I've just left it. <laughs> The longer you leave it, the harder it is to get off. It's so much easier to get it off when it's fresh. And a lot of times, a bit of water and uh, just a bit of blotting, then I'm not talking about flooding it and then scrubbing it. Not That's like your story, watch from the other video, the story about the 16 litres of soda water on there. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit of water, just, just enough to dilute it a little bit and yep. then soak it up. And okay. blot. That's right, and then you'll find a lot of times a, a lot of stains will either come out completely when they're still fresh or reduce significantly so they don't become such a great issue. So that when I do have to come along and you know, mm. we, we clean the carpets for you, then there's going to be a much greater chance of 100% success straight up. Now, you say a little bit of water, and we've had this on one of the other shelves, and you like just a spray. Yep. Done. It's That's literally it just once about. once you put a tiny little bit of water on there and it's wet. Yeah. It doesn't take much. No. Okay. Just a little splat and that's it. Uh, and then there's a product that uh, that I recommend. It's called Slurpex. Oh. Okay. They are available. You can find them online. Sounds like a kid's drink. <laughs> <laughs> it does a bit, but they slurp everything up out of the carpet. So it's S L U R P E X. They are the absolute bee's knees when it comes to pulling moisture up out of the carpet. These things are like a thick chamois block. Oh, right. And you just press it on there. They're always slightly damp, or you keep them slightly damp. So yeah, yeah. And you can use them time and time and time and time again. The last, my, my first one lasted five years. Oh, okay, wow. So, yeah. Oh. Um, and the only, actually, no, I lie. It lasted five years, and then someone borrowed it off me and never gave it back. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably still going, it's but so with good. those things there, you, you can actually just push down onto it and okay. then just release it slowly, and it draws the moisture up into this, uh, this this chamois block, and it leaves your carpets almost touch dry. It's fantastic. Wow! Where yeah. would you get one of those? Hardware store or? Um, I have seen around the place in, the, in a couple of uh, of markets, um, but I know you can get them online. Online. Yeah. The last yeah. time I, I checked was a few years ago. I've got a whole heap of them that I'm sitting in, the, in my place, which I do give out to some customers. Um, Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I think the last time I, I paid around fifteen, seventeen dollars for it. But as I said, it's something oh, that geez. lasts a long time, and it's such a minimal investment for something that actually works really well. And and what a huge save to your carpet. Yeah, I should get a, a, a commission here. For I Splinters. know. Yeah, it should, it should have a link underneath, an affiliate link. <laughs> yeah. so I should look at that. Yeah, you never know you like. You never know you like. Oh, Slurpex. Oh, I've never even heard of them. I've heard there was the, the chamois guy, you know, and he rings yeah. it out and yeah. he taps it all with his chamois. And okay, so it's, it's a similar type of thing, but instead of being a cloth, it's, it's a block. It's and it's, and block. it's just so easy to use. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Getting. Now, you say blotting. Say we don't have a slurpex. Yes. And I know you've done this before, but the blot never rub. That's right. Never rub it. Never rub. But blotting. But you gave a technique on cloth before. That's right. How do you actually do it? Okay. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. It's just um, it's either put a, a, a like a, a folded white. Never use colour, but a white toweling onto it, and then place a heavy object onto it. So it kind of acts like the slurpex in that regard, and it draws yeah. up into the fiber. You leave it on there for about you know, 15 minutes, half an hour, take it off, and it'll be quite dry Okay. in relative terms. Okay. Or the other one is that you can get the same thing again, the white cloth, roll it up to a sausage shape, and use it like a rolling pin over the top. So you're pressing into it, and it's drawing up into the fiber. Right. Okay. So either way will work, yep. uh, but those will not damage. As soon as you start rubbing it, 
Yeah. Okay, rolling over the cross of it. Obviously, there's no real uh, damage happening to it. Yep. There's no agitation happening to it. So you're just rolling over the top of it and let it draw into the toweling. Or the book on top of it, there's zero agitation and it just draws up. Job done. Must ask one thing about the water. Uh, Google, Uncle Google, uh -oh. says it's got to be solder water. I don't, I'm like, why? This is a coffee of a preference. Uh, look, there are some benefits to soda water, but if you haven't got soda water, um, yeah. then your good old tap water is as good as it comes. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't so, need anything particularly fantastic in that regard. Right. If you do have something left over, then you may be wanting to go to some more chemically orientated solutions, right. which is my next tip. Right. Oh, tip number four. four. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so with that one there, um, first of all, please do not go to Google, especially if you're living in Australia or New Zealand. That's why I said Don't it, because I know you love it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, most of the stuff you find on Google is, yeah. it comes out of America and their products are pretty much almost all synthetic. Yeah. Okay. And what you can do to synthetic carpet compared to what you can do to a natural fibre carpet, poles apart. Mm. Okay. Um, wool, in particular, um, has got a very narrow range of chemistry that you can use on it, and even a lot of the supermarket products you have out there, it will not tolerate it. Yes. Okay? I had, uh, had one job I had to go to last week, which someone had used a supermarket product on it. Um, started off with a spot that big, ended up with a spot that big, that was just shock-a-block full of detergent. Uh, another shall we say, franchise operator had come along and thrown more stuff on there and made it even worse. So by the time I got there, we had the detergent residues that were just abominable. There's so much in there. As soon as you put yeah. some water on it, there was bubbles <laughs> everywhere. Um, uh, then secondly, there is a, a, what's called cellulosic browning damage, okay, where the jute backing on the carpet had released lignin dyes or a natural dye within the jute, yep. and all this brown scunge had come up onto the surface of the carpet which can be quite difficult to remove but it's not something that you can do without professional uh, mm. chemicals i certainly wouldn't recommend anything just to, to try yourselves so there's something that we've had to take care of and then on top of that we had bleaching so it had oh. pulled some of the color out of the carpet now i don't know if it was the product that the uh, the, the the person who uh, um, had the spill in the first place used or if it was what the other carpet cleaner had used, but someone or a combination of the two had created an issue. Wow. But it was just all this stuff just sitting in there, which I had to flush out and then work through progressively to find out that the original stain was still there. <laughs> <laughs> so in that one there, I had to flush it out. <laughs> I could imagine. It's like I'm unwrapping. There it is. <laughs> oh, it was like it really was. The, it's unwrapping layer by layer by layer. So I had to deal with with. Oh. The, with flushing out all the, the muck that was in there and that was that, that took quite a bit of doing as well. Yeah. Uh, then I had to treat that cellulosic browning, then I had to treat the staining and then I had to recolour it. So that became a rather expensive process for what wow. should have been a really simple job to start with. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Someone learned a, 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 a well, I was going to say valuable, but an expensive lesson. <laughs> Still cheaper than buying new carpet. Well, yeah, well, because that was, it was, it was a high-end wall carpet, and it was only yeah. a, a, a bedroom, and not a particularly large one, but it was about $1,200 worth of carpet. Yeah, So, wow. yeah, I, I managed to save them that, yeah. Yeah, wow, unbelievable. And, it, and one thing I will say is that's why I do like it. When you do assess things, you're very quick to say whether it is going to be worth it or yeah. it's not going to be worth yeah. it, and if you can actually salvage it. And, of course, that colouring skill. Yes, yeah, well, that, that, that is a big one. Yes. Because uh, there's not a lot of people that can do it. Um, yeah. and certainly not a lot of people that know how to do it effectively. Um, and that's, that's me, once again, maybe big noting myself a little bit, but I have seen quite a few jobs that I've had to go and redo. Yeah. Um, because someone's attempted something and it's just not quite right. <laughs> and watch the other, the other video Franco did where you can actually change the colour of your carpet to a certain extent. Well, yeah, depending yeah. on going lighter to dark, you can't go darker to lighter, but you uh, can certainly have a look at it and maybe give yourself a whole new lease of life. Yeah, that's right. There yeah, we go. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's all, all different ways to skin your cat. Yeah, I think um, it's called Colour Your Life, actually. Colour Your Life, Colour Your Carpet. It's a great video on the channel. Yeah. Watch that one. <laughs> that's four tips. Do we get a lucky five? Do you get a lucky five? Okay. When you do need to use that chemistry, as I said, don't uh, go to Google. 
there is a really great resource that you can find very easily. And once again, that website, www.facc.com.au, you will find a spot cleaning chart on there. And it will give you processes and the chemistry you need to be able to remove probably 95% of the stuff that you'll find in your house yourself mm -hmm. without having to call me in. It shows you what to do, how to do it, what to use. And we're talking about just general household stuff that you're quite likely going to have anyway sitting in your kitchen or laundry cupboards. Yeah. So there's no rocket science here, but it's the chemistry we're chasing, not, not the products. Yeah. Okay. And we get things happening in a certain way, in a certain procedure, but it's all there in black and white or full colour. Full colour. Yeah. And um, it'll it'll keep you out of trouble, and, and in most cases uh, get uh, get stuff up. When you've got dye stains and things like that, look, there's there's no way on, on on God's earth that you'll be able to remove that yourselves. Yeah. Okay. Unless you have a polypropylene carpet, and that's an exception to the rule. Red red wine. Can red you get wine? that out yourself? To a fair degree, you will at least minimise the impact, yeah. and you won't set it. So you can rescue it. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. How much is that spot guide? Free. Oh. What's the website? facc.com.au. Definitely. Worth a look. Oh, abs absolutely. And it is really, and you've actually done a quite a comprehensive list on there. Yeah, well, I try to think of all the most uh, common spills that, mm. I, that I've come across over the, you know, the 30 odd years that I've been doing this. Yeah. Um, and then just put it down to a format that was reasonably easy to follow yeah. and uh, just using this, the sorts of things that you more than likely have at home. Mm. So it's not a big panic, panic, panic. Yeah. Um, you can just go through that, have a look through it, and you'll get the process. I think one thing, because we're in Australia, we're in WA, and winter's kind of coming in, and people are bringing their pets inside. Yes. And, uh, you know, our little furry friends may not want to go outside. <laughs> no. <laughs> at no. certain times. Yeah, little Fluffy doesn't like getting his feet wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of the most horrific things from a from a household you can kind of, oh my goodness how am i going to rescue this he's done in his doggy doodos or he's wet the corner or she yep have a look at that spot cleaning chart you'll have instructions on it's there on there as well for number ones and twos oh fantastic and, and for the occasional number three i guess yeah because they do they uh well pets are just like humans they do get upset tummies and uh and regurgitate shall we say yeah. their uh, that's right yeah and the unfortunate part with that is that a lot of times you, you can't get rid of this the uh, the, mm. the vomit but a lot of pet products even though our pets are essentially color blind they're colored yeah because it makes it look pretty for us yes <laughs> the, the pet doesn't care it just it smells good they eat it yeah okay but um with those food colorings especially if they've regurgitated there's acids involved in the mm. uh, the uh, digestive process um, and those acids help to set those stains in the carpet quite strongly yeah. so they they can be a bit of a problem uh, if you've had your, your dog dry biscuits uh, in particular yeah uh, or some of those treats so yeah you, you might be able to get the, uh, the the smell reduced a little bit and the the physical mm. elements shall we say <laughs> removed but the the dyes will stay behind now a bit of a bonus spot because i am conscious of your time but a bonus one you're the landlord and you've had some tenants in and a lot people have pets so we have to accept that yeah but the pets have been inside and he's gone in and there's fur and there's bits and pieces and you, you know what it's like you walk in you get that pet smell yes. that's trapped in the carpet yep can it be brought back so it's nice and fresh. And, and how do you yeah, do it? Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> what was that first tip I gave you? Yes. <laughs> vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. Yeah. Okay. Now I, I remember in particular I, I had uh, one job as on an Axminster carpet, which if you know anything about carpets, Axminster's are quite expensive. It was in mm. a rental property, um, and this guy had oh the hounds from hell in there. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, there was so much fur on there. I mean, I could smell it from my truck in the driveway. Oh, really? That's, that's how bad it was. Um, and there was just this white coating of fur over the carpet, and I vacuumed that up. Um, the carpet instantly changed color. Uh, it was quite dramatic. I've got photos of it. I think I've got some photos on the Facebook page as well. Oh, wow. So the Fresh yeah. Air Carpet Cleaning. Remember Fresh Air with an E? Uh, yeah. You can have a look at those, uh, all sorts of pictures in there. Yeah. Interesting stuff, but um, yeah, that still obviously had a very strong odour. So mm. once we've gone through that, we then go through a deodorising process. 
right. uh, which requires some specific chemicals. Um, I try to use ones that don't have too strong an odour, because mm. uh, I know there are some, especially some of the American products, Americans for some reason or another just love to go overboard on smell. Yeah. And I've okay. actually had people get to the point where they've complained about the smell because the smell of the perfume was so strong. So I always ask, yeah. do you like this? Do you like that? But we tend to go for the milder um, mm. uh, uh, perfumes mm. because there's no point in swapping one problem for the other. Yes, the other no. one smells better, but it's still, it can, you know, it something can still be overpowering. To yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So that can be brought nice. It can be, yeah, and it uh, cleans it up quite nicely. Yep. Uh, it needs a really, really heavy flushing. Um, it needs, and it takes time. Uh, and, and it's not just a case of like throwing the stuff on there and go, oh, yeah, okay, and then suck it off. You've, mm. you've got to go through the due process to do it properly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Frank Girl from Fresh Air Carpet Clean. Did you have one more you want to sneak in? Okay. Here, here's one that's a really easy one. Okay. Um, if you ever find yourself uh, in particular with a, a wool carpet, uh, not so much with the synthetics, but a wool carpet that's got strong indentations in it, uh, I know you, you look on Google and it tells you that you have to get the steam iron out and water and a cloth and steam this and... The other one you can do, it's really simple, use an ice block. What? An ice block. Really? Drop it on there and let it sit, just let it melt out, just tease the fibres up a bit, and nine times out of ten, you'll actually get rid of your dent. Wow. How simple is that one? <laughs> what a great way to finish the show. <laughs> Frank up here. Fresh air, with an E. <laughs> yes. Carpet cleaning. Carpet cleaning, And yep. check out that, uh, the spot removal guide. Yes, absolutely. So if you do have any problems, it's yeah. going to be your saviour and uh, it'll stop your carpets from being damaged, which is what I unfortunately have to deal with quite often is mm. damage, which is, I mean, what damage is damage? I can't yeah. uh, undamage a carpet, unfortunately, yeah. uh, unless it's just a colour. But if it's a physical damage, then obviously there's, there's, there's uh, yeah. the replacement's the only problem, uh, the, only, the only solution to that. Yeah. yeah. And you are the solution. So whether people are a homeowner, Yep. or whether they're the landlord or... Um, or the, the panicking tenant because they've got a rent inspection coming up. Yes, yes. exactly. You can fix 99.9% .9 of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we do miracles, but just not the impossible. <laughs> Franco, great having you on the show. Some great tips. And, uh, and the best way to contact you, is okay. it through the website or your, yep, or you your can, mobile? Uh, talk to the office, uh, 0418 914 097. You'll have uh, Deb or Jay there that can take the calls and take your bookings and answer a few questions. Uh, if they're more technical detail, they can put you on to me. Um, yep. That's not a problem. Or you can email us at info at facc.com.au um, or even just go to the query form on the website, which is, you know, facc.com.au, or even the Facebook page. There's also an inquiry form on that too. Fantastic. Once again, thanks so much. No problem. Thank you.